Hey guys, in today's episode of Perspectify, we'll be talking about four things you need to know about uh, OpenAI's most recent text to video platform called Sora. And yeah, let's just uh, jump right into it. What exactly is Sora? To put it very simply, think about it as ChatGPT or DALI, but for video creation. What Sora claims to do is that it'll give you a video output of one minute, right? And the, and the reason why it's so game changing is because it fundamentally changes how we look at media companies, how we look at content creation and the future looks very bleak slash interesting now. So why should you even care about it, right? We are people from tech, we are people from marketing. Why should we really care about a simple text to video platform, which just generates a one minute video does not have sound. And at times the physics doesn't work very well. Yeah, I was watching this one video in which I think they showed uh, this uh, this AI generated video of a grandmother celebrating her birthday. And if the funniest thing about it is if uh, if you look at the background, at first the video looks fine, but if you look at the background, uh, the the clapping of hands of people and the way people are reacting, it's it's hilarious. It's like really funny. I think. Um, but I think uh, right now what uh, Chat uh, what OpenAI has has at least built out is extremely riveting in the sense that uh, the videos are extremely high quality resolution is super high uh, and they have so I don't know if you know this but they've actually done a, a deal with Shutterstock to get you know almost the library of 32 million worth of videos which equips them with enough data to give you really good video content if you can give them the right prompt right uh, but i think um going from the whole spaghetti uh, spaghetti eating video of will smith uh, which will pop right here versus uh, you know what we are getting uh, right now that, that's pretty insane right i mean that's 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 insane within one year of time if this is the kind of jump people are making I am astonished and I am I am sort of even frightened about how the future looks because because the amount of implications this has is is, is crazy. Exactly. So uh, the rate of change which is happening in AI is insane. So if you look at Mid Journey V1 versus Mid Journey V6, the difference is insane, and that is just uh, text images which does not require any physics but this actually requires a lot of physics this requires a lot of science to be essentially built True. into the AI what's interesting is that open AI the the base model uh, which essentially empowers uh, Sora there is speculation going around that it itself sort of learned physics <laughs> isn't that mm. isn't that insane uh, that, you know, mm. a model with just 12 months of data has basically fundamentally learned physics from scratch, right? And people used to essentially mm. code this entire thing. So whenever we used to sort of build these 3D videos, 3D models into, let's say, Blender and um, a couple of other video generation tools, people had to code this stuff in order to build those photorealistic uh, videos, mm. right? What's interesting over here is that this is the V1 which OpenAI has basically released. It's not V6, it's not V7, mm -hmm. and it's already looking so much better than what we showed with the Will Smith video, right? Now, True. with just V1, I think the industry which won't exist a year from now or maybe three, four months from now is basically stock video images, right? Because mm -hmm. I remember mm -hmm. when I was working as a content creator uh, at a company, I used to spend a lot of time, uh, uh, you know, uh, searching for the right stock videos. Now, the whole point is that if you have the right imagination and if you have the right text or the prompt, it will basically generate a better non-copyrighted video which for which you would essentially need to pay a subscription. So this is something which is very, very interesting that's happening. And it will fundamentally, I think, change uh, the way we look at media. Mm. But I have a question here because, you know, funnily enough, I don't, even though this is a very exciting sort of, uh, you know, innovative time to be in, um, I've, I mean, uh, for the past year, I think ever since Chad GPT launched, uh, I have reduced my usage to a minimum. I don't know if that's the same for you, 
but what i also feel is like these are very like these whole pr things that happen uh they last for a while um and even if the model gets better and in fact i'm not even sure about at least in gpt's case right? i think there were a couple of issues along the way where the models got worse with time so the so the question i'm asking at this point is that do you actually think that this technology would evolve to a point where you and me would be sitting and writing entire prompts rather than uh, outsourcing this to video producers and video editors you know uh, that kind of for that kind of content i'll break this question into two parts right so the uh, the reason why you see a degradation in the responses is because you need massive compute right uh, uh, and and you need sort of a massive level of chip infrastructure to essentially give quality responses while nvidia is the only company and it it is basically killing at this point in time right the more compute that is there uh, in the future if this computation on an infrastructure level gets solved i think the responses would get better the video generation would get better and the uh, image generation like all three types of media generation would become slowly slowly better now coming to mm, the second mm. question that at this point in time will we be able to generate our own uh, uh video games or our own movies uh, through mm. this prompt engineering and i think that is the future so i was actually looking at twitter and and i saw this interesting thread or this interesting uh, tweet which essentially is, uh, talked about the fact that there was this guy who built an entire 15 second trailer with just open ai sora plus a uh, an audio generator uh, audio generator essentially in the future i feel that as long as you're imaginative right i think you'll be able to generate your uh, what you want but there mm. are two things that need we need to keep in mind the first is so when you look at dali right uh, what you'll essentially see is that uh, that whenever you give it a prompt it will generate an image and that image might be of a decent quality but you may want to change some part of it right so for example when yeah. we were building the perspective hai logo i actually tried yeah, yeah. I I actually tried I remember this. Yeah, and it gave like a pretty good logo I feel, right? Mm, But the mm, problem mm. was that there were certain aspects that I wanted to change, right? And the yeah. moment I sort of said that, you know, this is wrong and just change this slightly bit, mm, it would mm. completely generate completely a new Completely change the whole image. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think yeah. I think I think uh, fundamentally the problem we are facing here is that uh it can produce the output based on the first prompt. but if you have to tweak elements exactly. within the output right exactly. it's not able to figure out that okay the rest remains the same this is what we have to pop up here and in fact another exactly. weird thing that i'd been seeing with at least dali and uh, gpt's again the whole image integration is that uh, the images are very dense like a lot of the hmm. stuff that i was building let's say i was trying to do logos hmm. i was trying to do posters they're very dense in terms of hmm. a lot of elements being there right mm-hmm. so i am assuming that it might take some time now obviously with the image generation that was the case but i'm not seeing the same thing with video with videos if they are showing what they are showing in you know open ai season thread of all the videos they have shown that's pretty intense i mean it's pretty crazy because i mean obviously if you had to edit the details you probably can't do it that's something open ai yeah. has to solve for but yeah. at least in terms of the level of detail in the terms of in terms of the the liveness of these these videos mm. it's pretty correct. intense man correct absolutely and the reason why they have not opened this to the public as of now so there might be two reasons the first is that mm. it is election year and Yeah. obviously if this goes <laughs> out there it yeah. can be sort of disrupt uh, disruptive and of it course. can create a lot of bad press for open ai right mm. and the second mm. thing is that this thing actually requires a lot of compute right we don't fundamentally yeah. talk enough about uh, nvidia and uh, the, the shortage True. of nvidia ch- uh, chips uh, uh, they're able to generate such great outputs right now with mm. uh, with uh, with with a limited set of users is because there isn't a lot of demand for it right now yep. the moment they open it up for the entire public i feel that they they won't have enough uh, compute or infrastructure to produce the mm. same amount mm. of results so they need to go slowly they need to essentially True. uh figure out on an infrastructure level how to essentially scale this up and they have sort of and figured think, it out uh, 
Yeah. Not just infrastructure. Infrastructure is obviously one of one big big one of the biggest points. But as you said, right, that what if I just decide that today I want to watch a video a movie of Shah Rukh Khan in this particular storyline in my head, yeah. right? And I yeah. put him up in the video, and obviously now I've produced a whole movie with an actor who is not exactly uh, fundamentally given me the consent to take his his acting exactly. his brand presence, exactly. Exactly. right? So. in my head the biggest problem right now is how do these guys solve for uh, you know uh, let's say going even from a micro influencer level to a celebrity level how mm. do they keep removing characters you know in in uh, being integrated into these videos because again that could cause a lot of hurt to brands to 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 people who have again taken years to establish their uh, presence in the market so i think uh, in terms of consent i'm i'm still not sure I have, I I have a slightly contrarian view on this so I was mm-hmm. actually watching uh, this uh, uh, this podcast by um, Colin and Samir where they essentially yeah. interviewed uh, the YouTube CEO and yeah there they were discussing how uh, mixing uh, so there's this uh, feature in YouTube called YouTube mix mm-hmm. or something like that mm-hmm. where you can mm-hmm. essentially clip a part of a video yeah. and you can yeah. record it on top of that right so there they essentially talked about the fact that uh, colin colin and samir said that we are okay to do that right but yeah. the revenue has to sort of tie back to us right mm-hmm. and i think mm-hmm. that is fundamentally needed over here uh, so and but, and there uh, are, i mean even though you're right in what you're saying that the creators can always sign up for some kind of monetization exactly. of uh, of them of them being used as an asset in, exactly. in the videos exactly. the exactly. problem is um, when you're reposting or when you're mixing content right you're also making sure that the same clip that the creator has put out is mixed with something else right it's not a completely new generated clip that the creator has never signed up for in terms of what he's saying what he what he or she is doing mm-hmm. right so i mm-hmm. think that is something that still it's still interesting how these guys youtube solve. YouTube is actually solving that for an on an audio level. So I don't know mm. if you know about this or not, but uh, like some major artists like Charlie Puth and a couple mm-hmm. of other major artists in the US have sort of signed a mm. uh, an agreement with YouTube, where YouTube is mm. is essentially saying that we'll uh, we'll train our models with your voice, and then mm. creators across the platform can essentially use your voice can use it. to. to yeah. to build audio Makes levels sense. or audio things and stuff like that and some part of that revenue would essentially tie back to the creator or 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 the main uh, person who's providing that data so i think Makes in sense. the future we because point is that this technology is here to stay there's no there's no chance that you know this won't become big in the future right yeah, yeah. regardless of whether you you put regulation around it or you don't put regulation around it people will it somehow figure out people yeah. will people will <clears throat> somehow figure out how to get a shahrukh khan clip and yeah, use it for yeah, their yeah. video now it's just yeah. about figuring out the economics which is a part which maybe hmm. can be figured out and i think the last thing that again at least we have been always doing it perspective wise making sure that we equip people with okay like this is the trend what do you sort of do about it right and i think um the way sora is sort of uh, you know kind of building out uh, it's very clear that uh, the first peop- the first uh, line of uh, you know the army that's going to be hit is probably photographers and video creators right i mean uh, videographers right specifically if you are a videographer or if you are a photographer or even a video editor i think what you need to do right now is learn prompt engineering like if you don't know prompt engineering i believe you are 100% not preparing for the future at least with the speed of uh, you know the speed of how things are turning out um because because here's what i'm thinking right let's say in the case of marketing at least because that's how i think of most things uh, if i want to create a landing page right now and put up a stock video of oh i run a dog uh, a dog uh, service uh, you know dog food service i want to show cute dogs i'm going to put up you know this video right there uh, with this particular prompt so i have a super simple stock video ready or let's say i want to create uh, youtube videos for that matter i want to create explainers in the explainers i want you know particular regions of you know this country to be shown with so and so i mean the the possibilities are are, are crazy 
right um, but i think uh, that's where the job of video creators would come in where they have to be able to integrate this uh, this sort of momentum of sora and make sure that they are like ahead of the curve in terms of how do you actually create the right prompts right how do you create really high quality videos right and maybe at some point interviewers would also come and test that skill of yours again just speculation but but could be the case but i feel that as long as you can you are imaginative as i said before as long as you are imaginative and as long as you know how to mm-hmm. write what you are mm-hmm. imagining i think uh that that becomes more and Im- more and more important rather than just knowing the entire skill set right so i think True. that's where i am at uh, right now but though that view may change a year from now i am i mean i am i have a severe problem with how black mirrorish things are becoming and i think you are the complete opposite of that you love this i hate it um but regardless i i mean I, all of us have to probably slowly start integrating all of these things into our lives and see uh, where the future sort of takes us and i think that's a wrap on today's episode of perspectify if you've liked these episodes so far please make sure you share it with just one friend if you found it remotely interesting um and yeah i think uh, th- that's uh, that's that's me dhruv and uh, rakshit signing off and see you in the next one take care have a nice day